Right, I've routed a vertical line across there, that's going to be my horizon line. Uh, I think I'm going to tip it up this way again. This, you're going to love this. It's going to be like a dramatic sky. So it's like good practice for painting dramatic skies. But it's also going to be um, something a bit different as well. So the main thing what it's practicing is your skies. So start just lately, turning my papers this way from my skies. So it just runs down this way and it seems to be walking pretty good for me. So much back, back, that. And then I think what I'll do in a minute is probably spin it back to the way. Uh, plenty of water on that. Yeah, that's nice. And then them gaps where there's whites. So I think I'm, I still want soft lines. So just dipping into pure water and just popping that in like that. There. That's nice. So oh, lovely jubbly sand and then i think i'll spin it back that way now and let it drip that way as well there now i want some uh, darker colors now so i'm going to mix now a dark blue an ultramarine would be a good one or a cobalt any dark blue really wherever you've got in your palette not that important mixing it with a bit of bond umber and a bit of Payne's gray so it goes a right dark color and then just plopping it in Dead thick in there. Popping it in just like my stepbrother. A bit thick. If he's watching, he's gonna kill me. Let's <laughs> have one more time there. I wonder if I could blend that, soften that in a bit with me. Get a separate brush with just water on it and soften it in a bit. So that's it, especially on these bottom of bits. So these bits want um they're gonna be more faded and all that dripping look. Don't worry about that, that's good. So only well, let's get that spin it back round again. That way, and let's like upside down like that and just let it let it all drip about a bit. You get some right good effects. See what happens. I'll let a sip of coffee while that's dripping. Mmm. Look at that, lovely jubbly. Let's now take it that way. Well, I'll tell you what I can do now while I'm that way. Put some more in on this bit up here. Put some more on. I'm on about me uh, <laughs> stepbrother doofus again, aren't I? <laughs> Some moron, he's a moron. He's gonna watch it, he's gonna kill me. <laughs> he always watches these, he reckons he's gonna learn how to paint. But I always say anyone can learn how to paint, except my stepbrother Doofus. But anyone else can. Me and my stepbrother Doofus, we, uh, we've got to send in a bit of bother. We've drove drove to Fruit Village. And uh, in his open top car, we've both got done for indecent exposure. The police reckon that we were pulling a moon, but we won't. We're just driving through open top car, we won't pulling a moon. And uh, we thought we'd get some tan, and we've got a lovely colour blue. It was freezing, but anyway, um, we. Uh, I thought they said it's oh it's fine, but apparently they said we've got to pay a fine. So now, nah. well, what well, this this is a bit back. What happened is um, we ended up having to go to prison. That that good though on sports day, all pole voltages went missing. Right, let's have a look. Shall I pop a bit more of that blue in there? And when it drips down, I'm just dripping about. You know what? I reckon I'm going to add some more Payne's Grey into this. Well, in fact, yeah, let's add some more Payne's Grey in and see if that drips down even better. So just 
pure Payne's grain now this is. Let's see if that drips down. Even better. Looks nice, doesn't it? Payne's grain. This is really good practice for how to do a dramatic sky. Tiny bit in there. Tiny bit down there. Tiny, tiny bit in. And it's just letting it all run about, you see. Let's let it drip back that way now. That way. I'll do it so you can see it. So I'm holding it right up at um up like that look. Right up at a angle. I'm just letting it drip. Oh, it's looking nice. Oh. Just looking, there's a little bit there, and it's a hard edge there, look. But because it's just in a bit of a square shape, sometimes I'll leave tiny bits of that in because it's in that slight square shape. I've took it out, I left a tiny bit in. I don't know if you can see it. Right, I'm thinking now uh, that might be enough for that sky, but it's a nice dramatic sky look. So if I do that now, I'll leave it that way, right now. I want some bushes in. Is it still wet enough? Hopefully it's still wet enough. Get some bushes in. Go quick. If you go quick, then if it is still wet enough, that's cool. Because you've gone quick, so you've got your bushes in. Then, if that dries a bit, I'll be sort of quite happy because I'm going to do another layer of bushes that's slightly closer, I think. Probably just with the same colour. You're going to love this when I've done it. It's somewhat very different. I just had this sudden idea and I thought, I've never seen this, what I'm going to paint now, in a watercolour painting before. And there probably is, probably someone's done it before. But I've just never noticed it. And I thought, what a good idea. I'll tell you what, it, I might as well just tell you. What happened, someone, I painted a picture with someone who'd been carrying some logs. Well, some sticks and that. Like, so they were carrying it back for a sort of log fire or something. And someone said, oh, is that a scarecrow? So I was a bit offended because it weren't. It was someone carrying sticks. But I thought, that's not a bad idea for a painting. Equal scarecrow. I think I'm going to add some of this blue in this background here. Just as like an underpainting. Yeah, I thought, not a bad idea, that. Paint one with a little scarecrow in it. So, I'm going to paint an open field with scarecrow in it and then it's mainly going to be a sky sky painting the main thing about it's the sky so it gives you a good chance to practice your skies there, that's not looking bad at that right i'm going to squeeze that paint out now and wash my brush and i've managed to get it all oh, up my hands just let it dry a bit nice and relaxing this one you can take your time because i'm just waiting for that to dry a tiny bit more, and then I'm going to come in with some more paint. But at the minute it's still looking quite wet, so what I'm going to do while that's dry, you know, it's drying a bit over this side. So remember, it's ought to be quite quick. But while that's drying, get some, I'll just push that that way a bit, that's better. Get some of the yellow paints in this front ground here while that's drying. This is all like an underpainting, so building layers up as we go along. I'll go right up to the top with that because it can blend and drip down and that look. There, quite watery. I'll just dry my brush to dab, dab this really watery bit off. I'll add that, take it off and put it further up there. Look, there we are. There, that's me underpainting. Right, I'm just looking at this now. I'm going to dab back into that other colour. Tiny bit more brown on it. Let's see what. Oh, that's nice. Just a tiny bit stronger look. So it looks like there's two lots of trees there. It'll throw that other lot back. Tiny bit more brown in it. Oh, that bumped up by adding that in, look. It took it a tiny bit more of a green colour. That looks quite nice. Oh 
See that how it looks like there's two layers of trees there now. Lovely jubbly. And let's bring that down and make another layer in my painting. Dee, 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 dee. I'm gonna get a cauliflower there when I dry it. But I think it's gonna look quite nice with a cauliflower there, so I'm not gonna fuss over it. Right, I think now uh, let's get that a dry, then we've got one nice layer to start layering up. Being gentle with my air dryer so I don't blow the water everywhere and blow the paint everywhere. When it sets a bit, I'll turn it up. There. Squeeze my brush out, wash my brush, start getting into some like sort of yellowish, sort of like a hay, strawy type colour for a field. So let's get some yellow in here now. Boop, 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 look at that. See all, how I'm going? These are quite long grasses, so I'm sticking them in like that. But as I go back further, start doing them less like that do you know what i mean so the grass looks shorter and then as i get back further i start doing them more as lines now that's going green so i'm going to add a bit of light red what's like a brownie colored red to it as i go further back so it don't go too green there oh, oh, oh yes look at that now only just see me eyes and mine that's nice look. I wished I'd not gone through that bit of speck of white there, but never mind. Yeah, into there like that. Into there, and then some more spiky bits down here. Yeah, that's not looking bad, is it? I'm gonna have to do a few dries on this one now. Try that again. So I'm building layers, as you see. that front bit. Is that a sip of coffee? Mm. Lovely. I want more of that colour to come onto this front bit now. That's nice. Oh yes. There. Just to come over the top of some of them. See how this bit's looking closer look. See how quick I'm doing it. The quicker you go the more random you get. Looks better. Ends up looking better. Sometimes I used to think why do they paint dead quick? I need to paint that quick, just take your time. But I'm guessing that's why they did it. I say they, I'm talking about people I used to watch when, before I became a genius. Any, there, look at that, lovely. Another dry, and then I'm gonna add some more. Keep drying, adding more, drying, add more. Every time I'm adding more, I'm going slightly darker. It's even darker now. In fact, let's have some of that. I've got some of that Bontumbri blue colour what I've used there for them bushes. I'm going to put some of that in for my darks. Look at that. Oh, that looks nice, doesn't it? That's just all my little dark bits in there. Oh, yeah. I like that. And then, obviously, as we're getting, I'm going more um, vertical vertical strokes across here now as I'm getting further back rather than the grassy strokes because the grass is going to appear shorter as it gets more in distance in it of course it is of course it is man there we are it's not looking bad is it that what I'm thinking could I do with some more yellow in that background bit there lebbies 
sort of the shadows off the clouds in that background bit there then it looks like there's a gap in the clouds here give me a bit of sun I do quite like it like that yeah you know what I'm gonna leave it like that it looks like I say it looks like there's a gap in the clouds and it suns it in this front bit and then it's helping frame the picture so I'm happy with that I'll give that one more tiny dry and then I'll put the scarecrow in Right, just move that clip to a man. That's it. Now, Scarecrow, I'm going to go that same dark colour there. I think it'd be sort of silhouetted. Don't put it in the middle. You could put your one there. I'm going to put mine there. But just don't put it in the middle. Because it'll look daft. I guarantee it. Right, where's my glasses? I want my glasses on for this. Which brush is the finest? That one. Right, so let's get a little scarecrow in then. So let's say about there. So it's just like doing a little carrot to start with. A little carrot. About like that. Maybe it's got like a long coat on. And then it's like on a little stick. Like that. The arms. It's just would just be like a pole, so they'd just be sticking straight out like that. That would be like an old broomstick or something. Don't know what they make the heads out on. Big turnip or something. I'm gonna make his head quite long, because I'm gonna put him an hat, turn his head into an hat in a minute. What's this thing there. I'll get this tiny little brush and try and just make it look like. There's some bits of straw hanging down from his from his arms if I can. Little bits of straw. Oh get his hat in as well, look. That's his hat. So he's got an hat on. Some little bits of straw hanging down from his arms. I don't know if you can even see that. Bits of straw. Right, let's say my light, I think it's coming in this way. So if I darken this bottom bit here. Darken under the arms, under there. Under his head, under his hat. There, and then, yeah, so my light's coming that way, so probably be a shadow. I think I'll do shadow like with little blades of grass so you can just see that there's some, that it is the crops. Whatever the crops are. Yeah, that's a little shadow. And then what I'm thinking, I don't think is that scary. I don't think it's scaring these birds off at all. These birds are hungry. It's Peter and Paul, isn't it? Peter and Paul, they're not scared of a scarecrow, I'm telling you. So let's put Peter and Paul up here. Let's have Peter there. Paul there. You know, I say I make little stories up. I rang Peter and Paul have been and told all the mates, listen, we know where there's a field with loads of food in it, because they'll eat all this. So they've told all the mates, and all the mates just come down, nicking crops. There, you need a couple more right up there. There, they're all there nicking all stuff. We'll put a burden of dirt on it. Don't forget to sign yawn. Don't sign yawn, but uh, unless your name's also Birdie. But. But. If we get a bit more paint on, we'll go over that. Can't you see it? Bleak. Bleak. Booty, booty. There we are. What do you reckon? All right, that in it. It's good practice. Nice, easy one. And it's good practice for your sky. And good back if you're not very good at painting birds. Good practice for painting bods. Um, just a cool little idea up for a focal point. Never done it before. Never seen it before in another painting. Scarecrow for a focal point. Eat it.